Let me just be very clear uh, uh, what uh, the situation is and what we said. When um, the issue of um, uh, uh, possible um, legal debate over eligibility of federal court judges for the Supreme Court came to our attention, and I should mention that this had never come to our attention before. Um, it had not come to attention at previous times in our history when judges were appointed from the federal court, nor had it come to this government's attention when we had in fact appointed justices from Quebec uh, to the uh, Supreme Court, but nevertheless the issue was raised. When that issue was raised, uh, I did what was the appropriate thing. I sought legal advice from experts both uh, legal experts within the Government of Canada and constitutional and legal experts outside of the Government of Canada. Um, so anyone who says we didn't seek expertise is wrong. Uh, all of those experts, by the way, uh, as you know, um, uh, said that uh, uh, they believed uh, there was full eligibility uh, for uh, federal court justices uh, to this Supreme Court appointment. Um, Secondly, there's been some suggestion that rather than seek outside legal experts, I should have talked to the judges themselves. And let me just be very clear that I would never do that. Uh, I think the suggestion, um, I can tell you this, I think if, 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 um, if people thought or if people thought that the Prime Minister or other ministers of the government were consulting judges on cases before them, or even worse, consulting judges on cases that might come before them before the judges themselves had the opportunity to hear the appropriate evidence. I think the entire opposition, entire uh, media, and entire legal community would be outraged. Uh, so I do not think that's the appropriate way to go. The justices have to make their own decision based on the evidence that's uh, put in Ferial. Christina Hohen from CTV. There are people in your government who believe your political agenda is being defeated by the Supreme Court. Do you think that this public dispute with the Chief Justice is a result of that? Um, look, I my view is that um, my view is is that uh, in our system post 1982. Um, we have a system where uh, the court has had an expanded role in judging uh, the appropriateness of uh, laws, not just under traditional constitutional criteria, but under the charter as well. And uh, it, is, it is part of the dialogue of the democratic process. Uh, Parliament passes laws, uh, courts uh, occasionally uh, strike them down or suggest alternatives, and Parliament has a right to respond to that. So, you know, I, I guess I would say on, on uh, some things you win and some things you lose. Um, and, you know, we'll just, as I say, we'll just, uh, we'll just go from there. Obviously, um, uh, I didn't agree with the Nadon decision. I agree with the minority in the in Nadon decision. Uh, in the case of the uh, Senate reference, uh, you know, where, as I said, the court, uh, the court has decided that uh, essentially uh, it will be virtually impossible, barring unanimity or near unanimity, to make any meaningful change whatsoever to the uh, Senate of Canada. I, uh, you know, I, I look, I, I understand the, the court's reasoning. On the other hand, I think it's a decision that Canadians will be very disappointed with because I know that 90% of Canadians think the Senate should be changed in some very significant way. And uh, uh, saying it has to be the status quo for the foreseeable future I don't think is what Canadians wanted to hear. But look, that's the process. And um, we, uh, we uh, follow the decisions uh, and obviously uh, try and respond to them as best we can while also making sure we fulfill our agenda and, uh, and public demand.